Hello and welcome to today's lessons on the topics under the standard 2.1b in 7th grade and also we're going to be looking at topics under the study island lesson titled square roots. So as we're going through today's lesson, please be taking notes and writing these problems down so that you can have something to refer back to and study from as you are trying these problems on your own. And then you can also pause at the beginning of the question, try the question out yourself, and then work out the problem with me and see where you made any mistakes or where you're doing fantastic. And you can also learn from that also. And so I'm so glad that you are joining us today and let's go ahead and take some notes. So any number that is raised to a power of two can be modeled by using a square. So here, if we have five squared, we would want to draw a model that has side lengths of five. So a square that it has a width of five and a length of five. And so if you draw a grid then showing those five and you count them up, it has 25 little squares there. So the area is 25 units squared. So that means here that five squared is equal to 25. And then you could also go backwards. If you take the square root of 25, what that means is you're looking for a square that has an area of 25. What is the length of each of the sides of that square? And as we can see here, we have a square that has an area of 25 and its lengths are 5. So that means the square root of 25 is 5. So here's a problem where they give us a model. We have this square and it says the above model shows a 12 by 12 array of blocks. So that means each side here is 12. Based on the model above, what is 12 squared? Well, you could count them all up or you could use multiplication. So to find the area of that square, you would take 12 times 12. And that's what 12 squared means, 12 times itself not 12 times 2, 12 times itself. So when you take 12 times 12, you're going to get 144. And if you don't have that memorized, you can work it out. And so that's going to make my final answer C. Here's another model. And this one shows a one by one array of blocks. Based on the model above, what is one squared? So how many little blocks are there? there? Well, that one's easy to count. There's only one. And that's because one times one equals 1. 1 squared equals 1. When, which model is shaded to represent the square root of 36? Remember we talked about when you take the square root of a number, you're looking for a square that has 36 as its area, 36 blocks. However, the square root is just the length of one side. So first we need a square. So y and x are off the table because those are not squares. And then we need a square that has 36. So here, z, there's 16 in z. If you count up all the 4, 8, 12, 16. So it can't be z. w has 36. If you count, this, count them, there's 6 in each row. And there's 6 rows. So 6 times 6 is 36. And then the length of one side is 6. So that means the square root of 36 is 6. And our final answer here is W, letter C. This one here is asking which of the following represents the area of a square with a side length of the square root of 9. So remember, when you're doing the square root of 9, that means we're looking for a square that is has 9 blocks. So right off the bat, if they're not squares, it can't be A, it can't be B. And C has way more than nine blocks for sure. D here, it has nine blocks, three, six, nine, and it's a square. So that's going to be D. And so that means the side length there is three, so the square root of nine is three. Number five here says the model above has 64 blocks arranged in eight rows and eight columns. Based on the model above, what is the square root of 65? So th this tells us that it's an 8 by 8, and there's a total of 64. So because there's a total of 64, the square root of 64 is going to be this one side length. Well, one side length here is 8 
blocks, so my answer here is B. For the following problem, sometimes it's handy to have some of our perfect squared numbers memorized. So knowing that 1 squared is equal to 1, 2 squared, 2 times 2 is equal to 4, 3 squared, 3 times 3 is equal to 9, 4 squared, 4 times 4 is equal to 16, 5 squared, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 squared, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 squared, 7 times 7 is 49, 8 squared, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81, and so on. Having Knowing that these numbers here are what we call perfect squared numbers. They're answer to squared problems. However, if you don't have them memorized, you could just quickly make the list here by thinking 1 squared is 1, four, 2 squared is 4, and listing them out when you're about to work on these problems. So over here, I have written down my perfect square numbers, and it asks, what is the best estimate for the square root of 103? So this is, since underneath the square root symbol is my square, my perfect square number, typically, but this time, you can see 103 isn't there. So I'm looking for an estimate. 103 would be between 100 and 121. So, and it's definitely closer to 100. Well, the square root of 100 is 10. So that means the best estimate for the square root of 103, since it's so close to 100, is 10, which is choice A. So once again, I've taken time to write down my perfect square number chart on a scratch of paper. And I'm looking for what is the best estimate of the square root of 34. So I'm going to look at and see which number here is the closest to 34. That's going to be 36. So the square root of 36 is 6. So that means the best estimate for the square root of 34 is also 6. And it's going to be my answer D. For this question, I also went ahead and wrote down my list of perfect squared numbers. And it says, which of the following values is between 4 and 5? And it lists the square roots. So this time, I'm going to look at where 4 and 5 over here in my list. So that means that I'm looking for a number that's between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. Because 4 squared equals 16 and 5 squared equals 25. And so here, the only number that's between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25 is the square root of 19, which is going to make D my final answer. The square root of 15 is between which two integers? So, so to look at the, and solve this question, I'm going to look for what numbers is 15 between here on my perfect squared numbers, because these are the numbers that go under the square root. So 15 would go right here, between 9 and 16. So that means if I take the actual square root of 9 and 16, my, it would, the actual square root would be between 3 and 4. So that's going to make D my final answer. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.